there was a reporter for a local TV station who was interviewing at an 84 years old woman who had just gotten married for fourth time. The interviewer asked her question about her new husband. He is a funeral director, she replied. The reporter asked her if she would not mind talking about her previous husbands and what they did for a living. She passed and then said with a smile that she first married a banger. After he died, she wed a circus ringmaster. Widowed again, she married a man who later became a deacon at her parish. Finally, after she outlived him, she married the funeral director. The interviewer was quite astonished that she married men with such diverse careers. She told him, not at all. I married one for the money, two for the show, <laughs> three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> Dear friends, in Jesus Christ, two of those bigger questions are to be found in the gospel, one of them on the lips of Jesus and the other on the lips of the disciples of John the Baptist. When Jesus saw two of John, John the Baptist disciples following him, he turned around and said to them, what do you want? Jesus addressed this question to those who had already following him. In asking, what do you want? He was asking, why are you following me? That question is the one that we could all hear as addressed to us. Why are you following me? What do you want? Why are we followers of Jesus rather than followers of someone else or nobody in particular? Why are we Christians? Why are we Christians within the Roman Catholic tradition? We might be tempted to answer those questions by saying, I was brought to the church to be baptized by my, my, by my parents as a baby. I was given instruction in the Christian faith from a young age. All of that may be true, but it probably does not fully answer that question that Jesus asked in today's gospel what do you want? Or, as some translation put it, what are you searching for? Or, what are you looking for? We remain Christians, Catholic, because at some deep level, we are searching for something. There is something significant that we want. It can be difficult to name what we want, yet it is worth the effort to name what it is we are searching for in our following Jesus. The readings today can help us to put words on what it is we most deeply want. In the first reading, the boy Samuel's eventual response to God's call was, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel wanted a word from the Lord. He wanted the Lord to speak. Perhaps that is part of what we wanted to. We want a word from above, a word from the Lord, a word 
that throws some light on where we are and perhaps on where we meant to be. In the responsorial psalm, the person praying declares that God has put a new song into his or her mouth. Perhaps that is one element of what we wanted to, a new song in our mouth or in our heart. We want the Lord to put his words, his song into our lives, words that ever new, a song that is always fresh. We know from our experience that we can grow tired and weary and little exhausted. We can lose our enthusiasm for life and for people. We can settle for being half alive. We want a new song, new life, a sharing in the Lord's own song, in the Lord's own life. The question Jesus asked, what do you want, can be answered in all of those ways and in many others as well. In response to Jesus' question, those following Jesus asked a question of their own. Where do you live? At some level, they understood that Jesus could respond to what it was they really wanted, and so they were anxious to spend time with him and get, get to know him better. We too believe that Jesus can respond to the deepest desires of our lives because it is, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Because of that conviction, we too, like those first followers of Jesus, want to know where Jesus to be found so that we can spend time with him and grow in our relationship with him. The question, where do you live, is also our question. It reveals another deep another deep want in our lives, the desire to stay with the Lord, just as he come to stay with us. The Lord says to all of us what he said to the disciples of John the Baptist, come and, say, and see, come and stay. So during this Eucharistic celebration, let us ask God for the grace to respond his call, we will discover that he can respond to the deepest desires of our lives.